Okay, uh, hello to everyone. Today we're very happy to have Hong Yu, who is going to be telling us about subregion subalgebra duality. So Hong, take it away. Okay, good. So it's a pleasure to give the talk. And uh, um, yeah, uh, of course, even more pressure to, to visit uh, UBC in person, uh, uh, which hopefully I will be able to come uh, 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 not in the, uh, yeah, in the near future. So, so this is some work which I uh, did with uh, uh, Sam uh, uh, Hoyser, uh, who actually was an undergraduate at UBC. And he did the, some very nice uh, undergraduate uh, work with actually Mark, uh, um, yeah. And so, so we had two papers um, we, which already appeared. And actually, I mostly will talk about this paper, which should appear very soon. Um, so yeah, so in holography, we like to understand the emergence of space and time. So consider, say, we have a Bach space-time and some causally complete space-time region in it. Okay. And so we would like to know how do we describe such a, say, a region, space-time region in the bulk uh, using the, uh, in the boundary theory. Okay, so that means we would like to, to, to have a boundary description, say, of internal time inside the region. And uh, we would also like to have a boundary description of the causal structure, say, associated with that region. And uh, say we also would like to have a boundary description of some global time, which can take you outside the bridge. So just give you a simple example. Let's just consider, say, if you have global ADS, let's just consider some diamond, say, uh, uh, sometimes people call the real David patch, uh, 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 some diamonds in the, uh, in the middle of ADS. And uh, so we ask, how do we describe the physics of this region, say using the boundary theory, and uh, say the causal structure associated with this region, say the uh, so the time flow within the region, or some time flow take you outside the region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the goal of the talk is to develop a formalism for addressing this kind of question. Okay. So, so we will not be able to. Yeah, so, so to do this in technical detail would be, of course, difficult for, for every region in the bulk, but, but hopefully we will set up, say, a formalism to be able to do it in principle. And uh, so, so here, let me just say some slogan. So what I would like to uh, show is that the bulk space time can be considered as a geom geometrization of emerging the boundary type three y more Riemann sub algebras. Okay, so I will not say explain. Uh, yeah, I will not have time to explain what is a von Riemann algebra or, or what type three one. So you just imagine this some kind of uh, uh, operator algebra in, uh, in quantum mechanical system with some 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 specific properties. And so the so the basic idea is that. So if you have some emergent type three y volumen subalgebra in the boundary theory, and that can actually have one-to-one -one correspondence with a box space-time region, okay, and then properties of such emergent type three y algebra, then actually can be used to uh, uh, understand how geometric notions such as horizons, times, different different kind of times and the causal structure say emerges on the gravity side. And so, so we call this sub-region sub-algebra duality because this is a duality between some sub-algebra in the boundary theory between some sub-region uh, in the bulk. Okay. And the special case, uh, uh, a subset of the, uh, uh, this uh, duality is the sub-region sub-region duality, uh, which sometimes people also call it entanglement wedge uh, reconstruction, which has played many uh, 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 has played a very important role in many uh, holographic related questions, in particular in, in recent uh, discussions, say, of the page time, uh, 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 the page curve and uh, the, uh, yeah, unitarity, uh, yeah, and uh, this island story. And it's particularly actually nice to give this talk here at UBC because this 
uh, a sub-region, sub-region duality was actually um, pioneered in the visionary paper by Mark uh, in 2009. And then, uh, uh, and then also two uh, beautiful uh, papers from UBC, from, from Mark and from Joanna, uh, which uh, they, uh, they first studied the, this for the uh, ads window region. Um, good. So, so, so here is a basic idea. So we all familiar with the sub-region, sub-region duality. Say if you have a boundary region, and then uh, and then you can see that the RT surface corresponding to that boundary region, which I call gamma R here, and then the region in between, uh, uh, the course of completion of it is called the entanglement wedge. So the basic idea is that the physics in the entanglement wedge to be recoverable by physics uh, only in the region R. And uh, so what we want to do here is that we instead talking about say some geometric region R, we re replace this region R by an operate algebra, okay, associated with this R region R which I call XR, so this script XR. And uh, so by doing so, we get much more freedom, okay? In the sense that in order to talk, uh, uh, instead of talking about something uh, 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 thing depend on the, uh, defined on the geometry, uh, we can just directly uh, 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 talk about, say, uh, the algebra itself. So this kind of replacement is very common in mathematics, for example, in the basic ideas of long commutative geometry, is that it's actually uh, uh, more transparent and more general to think about geometry in terms of the algebra of functions or the algebra of operators uh, 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 in that space. And that defines a more general sense of geometry. Okay, so here we will use similar kind of philosophy. And so, uh, and so, uh, then this uh, this leads to the subregion and the subalgebra duality. And this replacement of geometric region by, by a subalgebra is powerful because that enables us to describe these more general regions in the box, which does not correspond to this kind of entanglement wedge. Okay, and uh, so by by going uh, to the subalgebra actually give you much more freedom. Okay, so that we can describe much more general regions uh, in the gravity side. I actually believe in principle, uh, I, I believe we can uh, 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 um, uh, describe all causally complete region in the box. So, so, so after this quick introduction, so here is my plan. So first I will talk about, uh, emphasize some key elements of ADSAFT in the larger limits. So this actually turns out to be a somewhat long discussion because this laid the foundation for um, for the discussion of the formulation of the duality for general bulk region. So once this foundation is properly set up, and you will see that this formulation is essentially trivial. Okay, uh, it, it, it's very simple. And uh, and then I will talk about the insights into the sub-region, sub-region duality come from this uh, uh, Monluma algebra perspective. For example, in principle, we can uh, define RT surface without using entropy. And also I will introduce something called the additivity anomaly. And then that, then I will show that actually underlies many geometric uh, properties we observe uh, in the box. And in particular, give uh, an explanation of the physical region of this uh, quantum error correction properties, uh, which has been studied a lot uh, uh, on the gravity side. And then I will discuss some more general examples of the sub-region, sub-algebra duality, then corresponding to sub-regions, which say, for example, don't uh, uh, make contact to the bound. Yeah, uh, just more general uh, regions rather than the standard uh, 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 the entanglement wedge. And then I will conclude with some future perspectives. So likely, I, I think I have prepared too much. So, so you can essentially stop me at any point. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, just whatever I can reach is fine. Good. So, so before I uh, start uh, uh, talking about the first aspect, do you have any questions? Okay, good. Um, 
So, so first I will emphasize some aspect of the holography in the larger n limit. So here first is just set up my notation. So holography is a duality between the Bach gravity theory and the boundary CFT. So here we have G Newton in the Bach and the map to some one over N uh, in the boundary CFT. So N, the meaning of, uh, of N can be different for different CFTs, but uh, just roughly N uh, is a number which characterize the number of freedom. And then the semi-classical limits in the gravity sides then corresponding to G Newton goes to zero, which I will always keep H bar fixed. Okay. And then um, and then that's mapped to the angle to infinity limit. And then the fundamental field on the gravity side, uh, including stringy fields, and then the map to single trace operators on the boundary CFT, and uh, uh, say there's also one to one uh, correspondence between the quantum states on two sides. And so on the gravity side, when you take G Newton goes to zero limit, so you keep H bar fixed. And then what we get is the classical limit. Okay? Uh, we, we get classical geometry. And so similarly, uh, 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 yeah, because of the duality, so this should also happen in angle to uh, uh, infinite limits in the, in the boundary side. So what we like to understand is how all these classical geometric notions arise from the boundary uh, uh, perspective uh, in this angle to infinity limit. <clears throat> so, so yeah, uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, was there any question? Okay, good. So, so first I want to emphasize that geometric notions such as local space-time regions, horizons are sharply defined only in the G Newton goes to zero limit. Okay. So if you have a finite G Newton, uh, a quantum, spi uh, quantum space-time fluctuations make such kind of geometric concept fuzzy. Right now, we don't have a precise language to describe this regime, okay, this kind of genuine quantum uh, gravitational regime. Uh, uh, the only thing we know how is how to do the, uh, uh, mostly to do the perturbative expansion in G Newton and then, uh, 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 and then some kind of set of point approximation, which capture some non perturbative effect. So that's why uh, we will just focus. Uh, uh, yeah, so the questions of emergence of space and time that can only be formulated sharply in the G Newton goes to the, uh, zero limits. And this translates into n equal to infinity limit over the boundary C. And so, so important step to understand this is to pinpoint the precise mathematical structure that is responsible for the emergence, say, of various uh, geometric notions. And so we will yeah, argue that this ubiqu uh, ubiquitous emergence of this type three volume and subalgebras uh, are the key uh, mathematical structure. Okay, so, so before proceeding further, let me just make some general philosophic remark. So we should you, you should view this emergence of space and time in the G Newton goes to zero limit or, or angle to infinity limit as the analog, say, of the phase transition in, in statistical physics. So in statistical physics, strictly speaking, then the phase transition can only be precisely defined, mathematically precisely defined in the thermodynamic limit. Okay, when you take uh, uh, infinite volume, take a number of degrees freedom and go to infinity, and then you have a sharp phase transition. But of course, in, in realistic systems, uh, uh, we only have very large number of degrees freedom, uh, uh, level infinite volume. But still, we talk about phase transitions, et cetera. Okay, so here is the similar uh, sense. Okay, so, so in order to talk about emergence of space and time and such kind of geometric uh, notions, mathematically rigorously, you have to look at this G, uh, G Newton goes to zero limit. But we believe the picture we obtain should actually also apply, say, for example, some finite but small G Newton. Okay, uh, and just, just you can only uh, talk about it in an approximate manner, uh, uh, just like we talk about phase transition uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the real experiments. Good. So, so, so let me just, uh, uh, then that 
means that the larger limit of the duality is uh, of crucial. So we want to understand the ma mathematical structure of it. So let's, for example, just, yeah, it, it, it's, it's always good to keep some specific theory in mind. For example, say in for super Yamil theory with gauge group S U N. Uh, uh, yeah, but this, but the discussion is general. And the key is that many states, say if you take SU 1000, okay, so N equal to 1000. And you can look at the Hilbert space, you can look at operators, et cetera. But the many states and operators which exist at the finite N, they don't actually necessarily have a well-defined large N limit. They don't necessarily exist for all N. And in particular, they don't necessarily have a well-defined large N limit. And in fact, we believe many of them don't, okay? So that tells you, because many states and operators that don't have a well-defined large N limit, so essentially they drop out in that limit. So that means that the structures of Hilbert space and operator algebra actually undergo dramatic changes in the large N limit. Okay, uh, so, so we would like to understand the change. So let me just give you a, a, a analog. So let's consider, say, if you have a lattice system, and then we take uh, uh, with lattice spacing A, and then we take continuum limits, so you get the continuous space. Okay. So in the lattice, say let's consider some region, say say half space. Okay, uh, some region R, so the right hand space, and then the uh, then your Hilbert space then factorize into the Hilbert space for this right region and for the left region. Okay, and then the operator algebra in this uh, right region is type one when you imagine. But when you take the continuum limit, similarly, many states and operators, uh, uh, many states in the Hilbert space uh, at, uh, at, in the lattice series they actually uh, become have infinite energy when you take A equal to zero. So they drop out of your spectrum uh, uh, of your continuum series. And the, similarly for some operators, okay. So that actually uh, leads to dramatic changes. So in the continuum limit, you find that this, uh, the, your, your Hilbert space, the remaining state, which are well defined in the continuum limit, is no longer factorizable in terms of some right Hilbert space uh, uh, times the left Hilbert space. And also the, uh, uh, accordingly, uh, your operator algebra also undergoes uh, 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 dramatic change. So instead to be type one algebra and become type three one algebra. And this algebra property is actually crucial for the emergence of a sharp light cone. Okay, because, because if you have a, a, a lattice system, you don't really have sharp light cone. Okay, so in order to have a sharp light cone, to have sharp uh, uh, a causal structure, this type one, uh, type three one structure is actually crucial. Okay, so, so, if you look, uh, uh, so the similarly uh, with this Nagian limit, say, of the boundary series. Okay, so many geometric notions, et cetera, uh, uh, come uh, because of this kind of uh, new emerging structure in the large limit. Okay, so, so now let me just say, say uh, by turn, uh, 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 what happens to the operator algebra and the Hilbert space in the large limit. Okay. So, so first, let me just talk about the operator algebra. So we say an operator has a sensible large N limit if its vacuum correlation functions have, uh, has a well-defined angle to infinity limit. Okay, so you have to be able to define this operator for all values of N and then, and then you calculate these correlation functions and then you find the correlation functions have a, a, a well-defined angle to infinity limit. So from the standard say large N factorization say of a large N theory, and you deduce that for generic series that just give you finite product uh, of single trace operators. And then in the in the infinite and in, in the large n limits, so this finite product of single trace operators they actually form an algebra. Uh, so we call them uh, single trace operator algebra, uh, 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 which I will uh, label by a. Okay, so uh, from now on, this a is a single trace operator algebra. Say of your um, origin, yeah, of your original series. So by definition, this A is state independent. Okay, it's yeah, just uh, some operators don't depend. Uh, uh, they don't depend on the states. Okay. 
And the key feature of this uh, 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 this collections, say this uh, uh, algebra generated by single trace operators, is that uh, at, uh, single trace operator at different times they are actually independent. Okay, so so let me just uh, 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 this consider just if you have a, a, a domain of dependence for some region. Okay, so so this is just some some uh, uh, some domain of dependence on the boundary. And if you have ordinary quantum field theory, then the operator algebra defined on this slice A1, uh, 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 the algebra on this blue slice is equivalent to the algebra, uh, uh, operator algebra defined on this uh, uh, red slice. It's because you can use just Heisenberg equation motion to express any operator, say on one slice in terms of operate on the other sides. And uh, so this is in the ordinary QFT. But for the for the algebra of single trace over in the Nagian limit, they are in equivalent. Because you cannot, so if you express, say if you I, I, you're, uh, 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 if you evolve the single trace operator back, okay, using your uh, Hamiltonian, that inevitably will involve some some operators which actually which drop out uh, uh, in the larger limit. Okay, so uh, so you don't have a closed equation uh, 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 within the single trace operators, uh, uh, a closed uh, time evolution uh, 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 in the in, in the in the single trace operator edge. And this simple fact will play a very important role uh, uh, in my discussion. Uh, just, yeah. just to clarify, so, so I guess the essential point is that you're the um, the algebra is you're considering like arbitrary finite products of single trace yeah. operators, and and somehow this evolution would give you something which is I mean presumably maybe if you yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which yeah, would be can, sort of yeah, infinite, have infinite precise, terms. Right, right. I can make a, a more precise. Uh, let yeah. me see whether I can. Um, let me see. There's a way to. Um, somehow I don't know. There's a way to. Um, somehow I, I cannot go uh, go out of this uh, a full screen format. If I go uh, out the full screen format, maybe I have. Um... Yeah, anyway, uh, 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 maybe I can do it later. I have a, a, a backup slides. I can explain that point a little bit more explicitly. Uh, and the key is that the evolution operator, uh, the Hamiltonian, mm -hmm. uh, uh, depend on explicitly on N. Yeah. And so, so when you evolve it, and, uh, and then yeah, so that evolution, uh, when you exponentiate your Hamiltonian, that leads to uh, something very complicated. And yeah. when you evolve it using that scene, and uh, uh, yeah, that does not lead to well-defined single trace operator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's, it's maybe not totally obvious. Like if you if you start with the single traces and then you start multiplying them and taking taking limits and things like that to to get a full algebra, you can yeah. get some complicated things. But I guess the Right, right, right. It, yeah, um, yeah. I have a perfect slides which can explain this, but somehow, yeah, uh, I was worried about time, so I didn't include that slides here. I put it uh, uh, at the end. Okay, um, well, let's let's continue, and we can we can come back. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. So yeah, it's just keeping this in mind uh, because this will be a very crucial feature. I use it from uh, uh, over and over again. And then let's say a little bit about Nagian limit of the Hilbert space. So many states, they don't have a well-defined Nagian limit. And so, so, so then we need a criterion to define what kind of state have a Nagian limit, okay? So here I have defined what operators have de uh, been well-defined. Uh, then here we define a state to have a well-defined Nagian limit if correlation functions of single trace operators say with the expectation value subtracted, uh, have well-defined the Nagian limit. So we already defined what kind of operators survive in the limit. 
And then we, then we use the operators which are survived in the limits to define what kind of states survive in the limits. Okay, so by definition, the vacuum always survives because I use the vacuum to define uh, which, op uh, uh, which class of operators uh, have a well-defined Lagrangian limit, and then we use that to define the states, uh, which state have a way to define that state. Question, can, can we just use, I mean, there's a state operator correspondence. Yeah. True that the, the states corresponding to the operators with a well-defined large end limit have a well-defined large end limit? No, that breaks down. Okay. Yeah, for example, uh, yeah, here is the example. Uh, um, so, so, so let's consider, say, a uh, uh, thermal density operator. So the thermal density operator using this criterion, so you just study correlation functions of single trace operator, say in the, in the thermal density operator or in the uh, 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 thermal field double states. And then, then, then you can show that they have a well-defined energy and limit. Okay, uh, 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 they can define. But the row beta is not part of your operator algebra. Okay, and uh, and this TFT it, uh, it does not correspond to a single trace operator or or or, or product of single trace operators. And uh, in particular, here it's important that we define row beta and the TFT using that the correlation function of single trace operator are well defined in them. Mm -hmm. We define the, using the operate, uh, using a limit of correlation functions, okay? Because of the right-hand side, we can no longer define them in the larger limits. So, so in the larger limit, we define them as a limit, okay, of the uh, 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 finite end correlation functions. Because of the right, uh, on the uh, infinite limit, we don't know how to, uh, the right-hand side that breaks down. For example, in this case, we don't know how to define the trace in the larger limit. We don't know how to, because H is proportional to N, we don't know how to define this explanation, uh, 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 this exponential. And similarly, uh, uh, here, not all macro states here on the right-hand side for the thermal field double state, they have a larger limit. Mm -hmm. And essentially this equality don't have a larger limit. Okay, but nevertheless, we can define rho beta and the TFT in large end. Okay. Uh, Hong, in this, oh, I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. Uh, uh, sure, uh, uh, but by the way, I, th I think the, the, the time is not such a, a critical factor here. So, so okay. I, you know, I, th I think I'm inviting everyone to ask questions and you know, we're not gonna worry too much if, if it goes long. Um, the question I had, so the statement, a state has a well-defined large end limit. Yeah. So. Uh, I just want to be completely clear there. So if, if I give you a state at n equals seventeen, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it's it's not totally clear. If I now I go to n equals eighteen, so it's not totally clear that there's a corresponding state. So the the idea that a state would have a large n limit sounds like that I I should be able to start with a state and then define a sequence of states that are in some sense. The same state are related to each other, and then ask whether that sequence kind of converges to something which remains in the right in the space of states. So, so, I mean, is there is there some construction like that that would actually, um, you know, define a sequence of states starting from some state or right, right, yeah. So, so indeed. So uh, to, to be able to define, you have to think in terms of a sequence of states. And, uh, and the, uh, uh, that's basically what I said earlier, just most of the states, we don't know how to define such a kind of sequence. And, but, but for example, for rho beta and TFT, we know how to define such a sequence. And for the vacuum, we know how to define such a sequence. Mm -hmm. And then we can just use the behavior of the correlation function of such a states and to define its limit. Okay, so, so we don't have to define, uh, we don't use their fundamental uh, definition at the finite end because those uh, uh, definition no longer works. And then we just define, uh, if we can specify their correlation functions with n as a parameter, and then we can define them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way, uh, uh, that's the way we define them, yeah. Uh, it's not clear. So, so uh, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, say, say if you just take S, U, N equal to, uh, 1000, it's not clear 
uh, uh, which state actually you can define uh, uh, for uh, 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 for one thousand one or, mm -hmm. or, or, or for every m, and mm -hmm. so somehow you have to find some other uh, some way to specify it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some classes of states like you could take some you know, some sources in a Euclidean path integral and right, then right, that's a, right, exactly. a state yeah. that's just defined in some classical data. And then those ones have obvious generalizations, but more, more right, general state right. is not clear. Yeah, yeah, that's right, exactly, yeah. Yeah, here, here we don't tell you how you define this sequence. We just, uh, we just need to assume, suppose such a sequence exists, and then we can use this criterion to say which states are well defined, which are not. Good. So, so now, so we will refer to a state with a well-defined Nagian limit as a semi-classical state. And then, then for each semi-classical state, say Psi, we can actually build a Hilbert space around it by acting finite product of single trace operate on it. Okay, and then you can show in the Nagian limit, actually uh, this does have a, a structure of a Hilbert space. Okay, so this is called the GNS uh, a construction, and uh, uh, I will not go into details. And then the the result is called the GNS Hilbert space. So so heuristically, you you view this GNS Hilbert space as the states, as the just the states uh, uh, of yeah uh, uh, corresponding to excitations, finite number of excitations of single trace operators. Okay. And uh, say, now if you have, say, elements, say, some product of single trace operators in your single trace operator algebra, and then this gen, uh, it has a natural representation on this GNS Hilbert space. So it acts on this GNS Hilbert space. So, uh, so it has a natural representation uh, in this GNS Hilbert space. Okay, so B, a GNS means just the operator, uh, 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 B is the, uh, the full operator algebra on this GNS Hilbert space. So then each single trace operator can be uh, has a representation uh, yeah, on this GNS Hilbert space. And so, so, uh, uh, so this gives rise to a representation of the single trace operator algebra in the GNS Hilbert space. And of course, this representation is state dependent, okay, depend on the uh, uh, specific uh, psi uh, 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 you are acting on. So I emphasize this is because different psi can lead to very different representations with very different mathematical and physical properties. So even though your original single trace over the algebra say state independent, but their action on individual uh, 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 JS Hilbert space actually uh, uh, are state dependent. Okay, depend on this psi. And we will see examples of this nature. And what this Nagian factorization uh, gives us is actually this GNS Hilbert can in fact be generate, uh, generated with a Gaussian theory of single trace operator at the leading order in one of n expansion. Uh, uh, so at the leading order expansion, just each single trace operator become a generalized free field. And uh, yeah, so this is the Gaussian theory. And then, then this generalized free field can be used to generate a Hilbert space. And then this is your GNS Hilbert space. Um, Oh, by the way, uh, 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 Lampros, did you have a question earlier? Yeah, it was uh, just a minor uh, clarification point. Uh, so when you were making the statements about uh, the density matrix not being part of, uh, the thermal density matrix not being part of uh, the allowed states and the large and limit, I just wanted to clarify that you were implicitly above the Hawking page transition in making that claim. Um... Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, even below the Hawking page transition to to specify it is a little bit tricky too. Um, yeah, yeah, but certainly there's a distinction. Yeah. Right, right. Because uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, that this uh, clarification just because you would expect that below the Hawking page transition you have type one algebras uh, on the two systems, and therefore at least you can talk about the thermophile double state or at least a reduced density matrix. Am I missing something in that statement? Yeah, but still, uh, uh, what you said is all correct. But still, to define this operator, it's not easy to do. Just, uh, uh, just mm. uh, because this trace, this thing is, uh, 
this is something defined on your full Hilbert space and H. Yeah, just define this thing is still tricky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, still, we don't have a good way to define this uh, 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 when you take angle to infinity. Yeah, but what you mm -hmm. said is correct. Uh, okay. There's a distinction which I uh, will also mention later. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, good. So let me emphasize for two semi-classical states, psi one, psi two, uh, uh, that Hilbert space actually don't overlap. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so the full state space at not gn actually splits into disconnected GNS Hilbert spaces around semi-classical states. Okay, so you actually, in the angle to infinity limits, because of many states drop out, you yeah. actually don't have a, such a global Hilbert space structure. Uh, it, it, in fact, we have just this kind of di uh, disconnect gene as Hilbert space around semi-classical states. And, uh, and now let me also make some comment on the uh, Hilbert space on the gravity side. So in, in the G Newton goes to zero limits, the only way we know how to uh, uh, describe quantum states on the gravity side it's by quantize small excitations around the classical geometry. So this just build, uh, become essentially quantum field theory in the curved space time, okay, including graviton. Okay. And if you have a classical geometry, then you can uh, just expand all your fields around this classical geometry, you can construct your focus space. And you, uh, uh, you designate a vacuum depending on your physical purpose, and then you can construct focus space. And the states in the same Fox space have energy difference of order say n to the power zero, yeah, of G Newton to the power zero. And the energy differences for different uh, classical geometry, uh, 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 they differ by order G Newton minus one. And uh, so again, the Fox space for two classical geometries, they don't overlap. And then, then the full state space on the gravity side in this Newton goes to zero limit again, splits into disconnected fork space. Fork space is around different geometries. So in the Newton goes to zero limit, we don't know any operator can take you from one geometry to another geometry, okay? And uh, uh, we believe that only exists. Okay, so, so again, they split into this structure. So just to summarize the structure of the holographic duality at not GM, he said we have some states, semi-classical states, which we define, uh, which we can intrinsically define on the field theory side. Then that should be dual to some geometry. So here by geometry, I can also mean the stringy geometry. Okay, so you can have uh, 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 upper prime can be finite, but just uh, GS has to be very small. G, uh, GS a uh, perturbative in, in, in G string. And then 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 we should identify this. In S Hilbert space around the semi classical states with the Fox space around, say, some geometry. And then, then, then if you identify the, uh, the Hilbert space around specific states, then of course you can also identify the operator algebras associated with each Hilbert space. And uh, so let me denote the operator algebra, the representation of single trace operator algebra, say, this in S Hilbert space to be M psi. And on the gravity side, say the operator algebra on the fork space to be m tilde psi. And then, 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 then they should also be identified. Yeah, yeah, here I just give you a notation for this now. Okay. And so if I have a single trace operator and the representation, so pi, pi psi O means the representation of this single trace operator in, uh, in this gene S Hilbert space. And then this is mapped to the perturbation of the Bach field, say around this geometry. Okay, so both of them are state dependent. Uh, uh, these are state dependent because this is a, rep a specific representation in this gen uh, gen Hilbert space. And this state dependence because this is expanded around the geometry. Okay. And so to draw a cartoon picture, essentially you have this kind of disconnected gen Hilbert space or fork space. And but, but each one, uh, the mapped, uh, there's a map between the gravity, uh, field theory and the gravity. And uh, um, and then then the single uh, this single trace operator algebra for each this kind of slice they can have very different properties. 
Okay, they can have very different properties. Okay, so now I'm ready to formulate uh, uh, this duality and now become just essentially trivial to formulate it. So, so we have this identification of the block, the, the boundary algebra, uh, the representation of single trace operator algebra in some JS Hilbert space corresponding to this state psi. And then we have the, the corresponding block algebra uh, uh, on the gravity side in the G Newton goes to zero limit uh, 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 around some geometry. And uh, so now let's consider a closely complete Bach region, space time region B. Okay, so I emphasize this is closely complete, say Bach space time region B. So since the Bach theory in the G Newton goes to zero limit is essentially uh, a quantum field theory in the curved space time. And then you can include the uh, G Newton corrections order by order. Okay, it's a, it's a highly unusual quantum field theory because uh, there, there's many gauge constraints, et cetera. Okay, but, but let's consider some closely complete uh, region B. And then the operator, then the Bach operate algebra in this restricted in this region B, then should be a, a type three one algebra. Okay. So, so that should be a sub algebra, of course, uh, uh, of your full algebra on the gravity side. And, uh, and uh, so, so, yeah, the, the, in the standard quantum field theory story, say the uh, operate algebra in the quantum field theory restricted to a closely complete sub region should be a type three one one in my algebra. And now, but then from the duality, so if there's a mapping between these two algebras, then there must be a one to one mapping between the sub algebras. And then there must be an emerging type three one sub algebra on the graph uh, on the field theory side, okay, which are identified with this y tilde b, okay, this spark algebra in this region b. Okay, so that means for every spark region uh, 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 in the gravity side, we must be able to associate a type three one volume algebra on the boundary. Okay, uh, 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 just from this duality. Furthermore, conversely, we would like to conjecture that any type three one sub algebra Y on the field three side, okay, there exists some Bach region B, somehow is identified with it. Okay, so, so, so this side starting from B, to getting a y, this is trivial. Okay, uh, if you have the duality, then there must exist the y, which is dual to this y tilde b. And this converse direction is more than trivial. Uh, uh, but it's it's a it's a lateral uh, conjecture. Okay, so um, <coughs> yeah, uh, 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 if you have any some kind of type three one algebra uh, in the boundary theory, so somehow that should correspond to some Bach region. Question. Yes. Um, so I guess from the bulk point of view, then, then we could, we could envision different, I mean, different ki kinds of causal structures, um, yeah. and, and that would maybe suggest, okay, that, that we have the, the, some different structure in, in the type three, one algebra on the boundary, some, some kind of different structure of, of possible sub algebras and how they're related to one another, you know, how they're nested and, but I mean, if I just have the structure of a type three, one algebra, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, are, are there any equivalent examples that would have this different structure? So, so is there, yeah, I guess this is the question. I mean, is it, is the, the fact that we have a type three, one algebra, is that enough information to sort of correspond to the uh, uh, no. base time causal uh, no. structure? No, no, no. Uh, 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 I think this uh, uh, just to have type three one is not enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but this provides a language to talk about yeah because what sub algebra you have what uh, uh, structure you have sometimes can be system dependent and the states dependent and so that will depend on some details. But uh -huh. later I will see. Uh, uh, I will uh, uh, point out actually that there is some universal structure related to what you are saying. Uh, uh, for example, in, in, in uh, when we apply this to sub region, sub region duality, yeah, 
we can define a universal algebra corresponding to the causal wedge, and then a universal algebra corresponding to an entanglement wedge. Uh, and that structure is universal, uh, does not depend on details of the states or the theory. Okay. Yeah, I guess what I, I don't think I was saying it very clearly, but I, the thing I was worried about is if, if you had, if, if somehow that like different type three, one algebras are just equivalent to one another, then anytime you had a sub algebra of, of one, there would be a corresponding sub algebra of the other. And then, I, I mean, somehow that would suggest that you'd get like kind of the same space time or there, there wouldn't be room for different kinds of uh, space time structures, but. Yeah, no, that's, uh, uh... That's yeah. You will see examples. Uh, 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 that's actually not true. So, uh -huh. so, so precisely, what the holography does is to geometrize this boundary emergent type three one structure. So, uh, so in the boundary, you can define some abstract algebra which don't seem to have good geometric meaning. But uh, uh, but somehow, uh, uh, what holography does, uh, what gravity does, is ge uh, geometric. Uh, uh, Geometrize it and to make it into actually uh, uh, the algebra associated with some region. Yeah, so this is my original slogan. And somehow, all any emerging type three one algebra, some abstract algebra you can see on the boundary side in the Nigerian limits, somehow they realize through some geometric region on the gravity side. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, I mean, we, we can go on it. I guess this last statement just feels a little like that, that, that any type three one subalgebra should correspond to a bulk region uh yeah, yeah this it, is sounds maybe too strong yeah. to me but yeah this is the conjecture yeah okay uh um yeah good so 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 now let me quickly discuss the example uh which we uh uh discuss in great detail in in, in the papers uh, 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 uh i mentioned at the beginning but here we'll uh, only work uh, give you a very brief uh, 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 summary. So let's imagine you have thermophile double states. Say, uh, say if you had sufficiently high temperature, and then it's uh, uh, described by this internal black hole in ADS. Okay. So there are many questions related to, say, how what is your metric structure uh, in this uh, internal black hole emerges from the boundary theory. Say whether you say where, where does the horizon come from? How do you describe this? Uh, this uh, 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 say a, a future and the past region, so Kruska like time, etc. Okay, and uh, so so it turns out that those questions can be understood from this edge practical perspective. So so at the final end. Say we have uh, so the bounded operator of either CFTR or CFTL uh, is a, a, a type one monomial algebra. Okay, and this type one monomial algebra is not relevant for large M because many operators uh, uh, here they 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 drop out. Okay, and uh, um, but in the large M limit, so we can consider the algebra generated by single trace operators, say or in the CFTR. And then, uh, uh, then, then action of this single trace operators on the thermophile double states, then generates this GNS Hilbert space around thermophile double states. So, so this is the Hilbert space to be identified with the Fox space on the gravity side. And then now, now if you look at the representation, say of this uh, single trace operator for the right CFT, okay. Uh, 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 on this JS Hilbert space. And uh, it turns out, yeah, it's, uh, 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 here there's parameter beta, okay, uh, uh, which characterize your, some of your double states. It turns out the property of this algebra actually depend on your temperature. Say when you are smaller than the Hawking page temperature, you have type one volume algebra. And then when you're greater than the Hawking page temperature, this become type three one volume algebra. And so for, for temperature greater than the Hawking page temperature, so, so we, then we can actually identify those algebras with the corresponding bulk algebras in the right and, uh, 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 and L regions. So, so the gravity side, you have this right region and the left region, 
And then we can just identify the single trace operator in the right series, right CFT with the operator algebra in the right region and similarly uh, 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 with the left. So here, uh, uh, Mark, regarding uh, uh, one thing regarding your, uh, uh, your comment earlier. So, so this MR, which is a single trace operator in the boundary theory, this is defined in the full space time. Mm -hmm. Okay, full boundary space time. And this is crucial because as I mentioned, the different times in the single trace operator, they're independent. And so, and so you have to consider your algebra in the full space time. Uh -huh. So, so this is your geometric structure is some operator algebra defined on the full space time. And, but in the bark, this M tilde R, because in the bark you have ordinary uh, quantum field theory in the curved space time. And this M tilde R is only defined on a single Cauchy slice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, and so that's how the, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, in this case, this MR also have a geometric thing in terms of the full space time. Uh, uh, but you see the space-time structure is actually different. Mm. Uh, but you can also see examples which you even have more abstract uh, 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 definition of these uh, 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 algebras. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so, so this is the definition. So this full operator algebra in the boundary series, they map uh, on the bulk operator algebra on a single Cauchy slice, okay? And so this identification then provides a way to understand various different time kind of times in the Bach gravity. So, so, so the Bach time evolution then can be considered as some, some kind of boundary automorphisms, say of this uh, union of these two algebras, <clears throat> it's MR and ML. Okay, so, so uh, if you just need to look at automorphisms and then you try to identify uh, 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 what kind of evolution they're corresponding to in the Bach. So, so the simplest one, it's just the internal, uh, uh, this internal time, uh, it's it just the uh, generated by HR minus HL. So this is essentially just the modular flow. Okay, because this algebra, uh, uh, Moluma algebra, uh, 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 you can define a modular operator, they can define modular flow. And then this, the time is within the R or L region. And then that just generated by the modular flow uh, associated with this algebra. And then, if you want to consider some flow which take you outside of this region, mm. say it can take you to the F region, say uh, corresponding to this kind of Cauchy slice. And then now that they can be generated by this so-called half-sided uh, modular flows, uh, uh, which I will not have time to go into detail. So this is some other structure uh, which you can define specific to type three one algebras. And, uh, and so this half-sided modular flow and then can be shown to generate this uh, a kind of Cauchy slice, which can take you actually behind the flight. And in fact, you can say that these half-sided modular flows can be used to generate the future and the past region from the right and the L region. Okay. In particular, and then uh, 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 such kind of flow generates sharp signature of the horizon. Because when you take an operator to flow across the horizon, you actually see some kind of sharp and analytic behavior. Okay, you see some sharp analytic behavior. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I will not have time uh, uh, to go into detail here, uh, 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 but can be done. Okay. So, so this way, so that provides a way you can think about how to uh, uh, various kind of time in the bar are generated. So now we can, so I believe this picture uh, it's actually general. Okay, even though this example is very specific, it's very special, but I believe this picture is actually general. Uh, actually provide the general paradigm to understand uh, 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 the general Bach regions. Okay. So, so before saying that, let me just make a, 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 a brief side comment here. So when we identify this boundary algebra in the CFT, in the large N limit with the Bach algebra in the right region and similarly for the left, such kind of identification does not say any structure regarding the Bach geometry. For example, whether this right region and the left region are connected or not, it's actually, uh, uh, it, it, it's not implied by this identification. Okay, that should come from something else. 
So traditionally, people uh, 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 have speculated. So uh, uh, Madsen, I think, was the first one uh, uh, already in his uh, 2001 internal black hole paper, and the mark in uh, his 2009 paper uh, were also like that. And then, uh, then, then also this SAS kind and uh, Madsen and this ER equal to EPR story. So. So generally believe that somehow they're connected because they have large number, uh, a large amount of entanglement. But here we see a somewhat different picture. Okay, here where you have temperature is greater than uh, Hawking page transition, and then the, uh, then the algebra become type three one, and then you show you have a connected space time, then R and L are connected. And by the way, temperature is smaller than Hawking page transition, and you actually, uh, they, uh, uh, they, be, uh, they are type one algebra. And then you actually have disconnected space time, uh, uh, which are entangled. Okay. So you might think, okay, previously we think the reason here is disconnected is because they don't have enough entanglement. Uh, 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 um, but actually, Somehow, from the algebraic picture, there's no direct way to think somehow this algebraic structure is directly connected with the, uh, the amount of entanglement. Okay, so, so here we are able to understand whether they are connected or not. In a sense, in a more precise language, because the, uh, in the type one case, then you can actually just generate it, all this region just to show they are connected. And so, so I believe this is a more precise picture than the ER equal to EK. So as I mentioned, I believe this picture for, for this black hole, for the internal black hole case may be general. So now let me just describe what, uh, uh, what we believe should be the general picture for the general bulk region. So now imagine you have some general bulk region B uh, uh, now this is just some bulk cause of a complete region. Okay, uh, there's algebra y tilde b associated with it, the, the bulk algebra. And that is identified with some algebra y in the boundary theory. And then, then the internal time of b, then again can be uh, generated by modular flow of y. So by definition, the modular flow of y takes y to itself, then that will take some all, uh, uh, take anything in B just within in B. Okay. And then, then the global time flow take, uh, take you outside B, then again can be described by some kind of half-sided modular flow. Okay, and then that can in principle take you outside. And then the causal structure, uh, when you cross this night surface uh, defining the B, then again, uh, it may show up, uh, the causal structure will show up in some kind, kind of line analytic behavior under the half-sided modular flow. Okay. And the conversely, if you given a Y, in principle, say if you give me a boundary uh, algebra, uh, type three by algebra Y, in principle, I can actually find the bulk region B whose operator algebra is identified with Y. So, so in doing that, I can actually essentially reconstruct this, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, reconstruct this region geometrically, okay, including these night cone uh, uh, boundaries. Okay, uh, 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 say so we'll talk about some simple examples uh, 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 of this data. Okay, so so if you give me the uh, uh, boundary algebra, actually I can uh, uh, reconstruct the bulk region. Good. So. So now let me talk about the uh, uh, insight into the sub-region, sub-region duality. So, so let's first remind us the origin, uh, 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 again, the, uh, uh, the story for this entanglement wedge uh, reconstruction or, or the sub-region duality. So now let's just consider the boundary CFT in the vacuum state and some region R whose causal compl uh, completion we call it R hat. Okay, R hat always means the uh, causal completion of some region. Okay, and then the entanglement wedge ER is often de uh, defined using the uh, 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 using the RT surface uh, to be the region between the RT surface. Uh, the causal completion 
say, of the region between the RT surface and the, the uh, uh, this boundary region. And it's also, I didn't draw here, it's also possible to define a causal wedge. So here there's a technical subtlety. So, so the normal way people define the causal wedge, it's actually not a causally complete, may, may not be causally complete. So, so here by, by causal wedge, I mean the, the improvement on that standard definition uh, 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 so that this is a causally complete region, okay? Because uh, only causal complete region we can associate uh, 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 with sensible volume algebras. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's not complete. And so you can also define some causal wedge, okay? Uh, 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 is some other uh, causally uh, 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 complete region can be associated with this boundary region. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, the causal wedge by definition is more precisely to say to be uh, associated with R hat because it's defined in terms of the uh, 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 the causal completion uh, on the boundary C, okay, so I, uh, so that's why I write C subscript R hat, but the entanglement wedge is normally defined in terms of the boundary itself, okay, uh, 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 can be defined in terms of boundary region itself, uh, 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 um, yeah. So so now the natural question is: what are the boundary algebras? Say say I below the x arc, uh, which is dual to the uh, entanglement wedge, and uh, and the uh, some other algebra which is uh, dual to the causal wedge. So in the park, this entanglement wedge and the causal wedge they can be defined in a uh, model independent way, in the sense that they're universal. Okay, you can define them universally. Okay, so so similarly in the boundary theory, we should also be uh, be able to define the uh, such structure. Uh, 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 in the in the model independent way, okay. but other structure. If you have some additional structure, that may depend on specific theory. But these two structure at least exist. Uh, 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 you don't have to talk about specific theory. So so conversely, if I have identified, which I will do, this boundary algebra dual to the entanglement wedge, and then by by trying to find the Bach region whose algebra is the same as this algebra, then I can actually recover the entanglement wedge in the box, okay? And I, uh, 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 in particular, uh, I should be able to recover the RT surface, okay? And so this is a way to derive the RT surface without using entropy. Okay, this is a way to derive RT surface without entropy. So, so this is a little bit conceptually more satisfying than the uh, uh, than the RT surface defined with the entropy, because as we know that the boundary entropy associated with some region is actually not well defined. In order to define entropy, you have to introduce a regularization to to define the entropy. But on the other hand, the RT surface itself can be defined precisely without using any regularization. It's precisely defined the geometric quantity, uh, a, a, a geometric object without using any regularization. It's only the area of the RT surface to define you re uh, require some kind of regularization, okay? But the RT surface itself is actually precisely defined. So it's a little bit awkward previously. That somehow you use something which requires a regularization to actually specify something that does not require a regularization, okay? And, but uh, but to define it using this this algebraic perspective, uh, and then uh, then it's sharp. Uh, you actually don't need to uh, uh, can be sharply defined without any regularization. <clears throat> anyway, so now let me uh, uh, discuss the proposal for the duals of a causal wedge and entanglement wedge. So the causal wedge will be simple. You just look at your single trace over the algebra, then you just restrict to this R hat region in your boundary region. Uh, so R hat is the causal completion of the, of the R. You just take your uh, single trace of the algebra, you restrict to that region. This double prime, double prime just uh, means that to make the algebra complete, okay? So this is, I think, what people normally assume, okay? If you just somehow uh, uh, the operate, back operate in the causal wedge, you should be able to just reconstruct using single trace operators on the boundary series. Okay, 
And the, the important property of this causal value algebra defined this way, is said to satisfy this additivity condition. Okay, he said that if you have operator algebra associated with R1 hat, and if you take the union with R2 hat, it's the same as operator uh, associated with R1 hat using R2 hat. Okay, so this is a additive, uh, uh, there's a additivity uh, uh, property. <clears throat> so not, so for the entanglement wedge, the definition is slightly trickier. So first we have to go to finite n. So let's denote the BR to be the boundary operator algebra associated with R uh, at finite n. Okay. So so this BR is if you define in R at finite n, so actually it's automatically defined for the full uh, uh, causal completion. Okay. Anyway, so now we define this XR to be the larger n limits of this BR. Okay, so so uh, uh, here I also make explicit the large n limit is defined. You have to respect to some states. Okay, if you don't uh, uh, for different states, this large n limit can be different. Okay, so this x r you defined by taking the large n limit actually state dependent. Okay, depend on your semi classical state. So this is the operator algebra, <clears throat> which uh, uh, should be uh, proposed, which should be dual to the entanglement. And then you can show, uh, uh, which I will not have time to do it in detail, and this satisfy all the properties which you will associate uh, 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 with the algebra which do an entanglement wedge. Okay, and including say this is called the uh, 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 the hack duality, that the uh, 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 the operator algebra associated with R should be uh, equal to the commutant. So the prime always means the commutant uh, 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 of the uh, uh, algebra. Uh, uh, of the uh, uh, the the, the complement of R. Anyway, so by definition, this uh, uh, this causal wedge algebra, this y r hat, which is a single trace operator algebra restricted to this region, uh, is a sub algebra of this, because this single trace operator algebra restricted to this region, of course, automatically uh, is well defined from our earlier definition. But what's tricky is that this chi uh, uh, x r also include something which are not, which are still single trace operators, but somehow they cannot be written as a single trace operators restricted to this region, uh, uh, R hat, okay. And uh, yeah, in certain cases. <clears throat> so, so why important the property of this X R, which associated with the entanglement wedge, is that there's additivity anomaly. So if I look at the uh, uh, the algebra, yeah. So so if you look at the algebra uh, at finite n, so this is B R which uh, associated with the region R uh, at finite n. So this algebra actually at finite n obeys the uh, uh, derivativity condition. So if you take the uh, the algebra associated with R one and R two, take the union of them, and then that is the same uh, as algebra uh, uh, which is R uh, R one uh, union R two. But this is no longer true for chi r, uh, for this x r. So this x r, uh, it's normally only a subset of it. Okay, sometimes it's equal, but sometimes it's a proper subset. Okay. And the, the, uh, the inequality arises from the taking the large n limit. Somehow in the large n limit, and uh, uh, because certain operators drop out, and this additivity uh, 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 property is no longer satisfied. And this is very easy to see uh, 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 in the very simple example. Okay, let me just give you a very simple example. Let's just consider you have one plus one dimensional space time on the boundary. So, so this is a spatial slice, okay? Uh, uh, say uh, the t equal to zero slice. Now imagine we have two regions. One is R1 uh, interval, and the, uh, in, uh, 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 another is the region R2, which they intersect, okay? And then here is the causal completion of R1. And here is the causal completion of R2. Okay, so, so by definition, say if you had finite n, this be R1, define R1, uh, 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 R1 uh, include all the operators in this uh, uh, diamond. Similarly, BR2 uh, include all the operators uh, in this diamond. Okay. 
But now in the larger limit, so for this particular case, actually there's no difference between this X uh, and the Y. So, so here this uh, uh, X R1 just corresponding to all the single trace operators in this uh, 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 diamond. And, uh, and X R2 just corresponding to all the single trace operator in R2. But this is no longer the same as the diamond of the R1 using R2. Okay, so R1 using R2 uh, is this bigger diamond. So, but, but if you add the finite n, then these two algebra are equivalent. Is because if you have the operator defined on R1, if you have an operator defined on R2, then you all have an operator defined on the full, uh, uh, this Cauchy slice for this bigger diamond. And then that's determine the full algebra uh, uh, for the full diamond uh, at finite n. But at the infinite end, as I mentioned, uh, uh, now the operator at a different point are independent. So the union of XR1 and XR2 are only restricted to the operators in these two green diamonds. But the operators in this XR1 union R2 actually corresponding to this bigger diamond. Okay. So for example, this operator OX is belongs to this bigger diamond, but it's no longer belongs to the two. Uh, uh, the union of two small diamonds. Okay, so this is just from very simple properties uh, uh, of the geometric structure uh, and from the uh, the fact that the single trace operate algebra uh, uh, at different time are independent of each other. Okay, so this is a trivial example, which when R1 hat using R2 hat is a subset of R1 using R2 uh, hat. Okay, uh, 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 and then and then leads to this uh, normally. Okay, uh, uh, this to this alone. And so, so this anomaly uh, 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 leads to some very simple uh, uh, feature we see on the gravity side. So, so now this is the single time slice on the gravity side. So this is ADS3 uh, in the Poincaré patch. So this is the boundary direction. This is the buck, uh, the Z direction in the buck. And so if you have this region R1, you have this in region R2, and then the entangle in the wedge uh, would be the half circle. Uh, 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 corresponding to R1, R2, but then of course the entangled wedge for R1, R1 using R2 is bigger. Okay, so uh, 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 so this feature, so this feature on the boundary, uh, 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 on the boundary is now uh, it, it, it in terms that I, uh, at this single time slice, uh, 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 there's this extra region inside the right region. Uh, uh, outside the uh, these two blue region, okay, and uh, 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 yeah, uh, and so this uh, uh, is just your metrization of that. So this is a a little bit more trivial example because in this case, the R one hat using R two hat is a subset of R one using R two hat. Okay, so you can consider more non trivial example. Say for example, uh, uh, consider two half space. So R one is the half interval uh, from here to, uh, to to minus infinity, and the R two is from here to minus infinity. They're separated by some finite interval, and then uh, let's look at the union of them. And then in this case, then the R hat of the union is the same as the R one hat and the R two hat. Okay. But in this case, nevertheless, you can show on the boundary that the, the, the union of the algebra associated with R1 and R2 is a subset of that. Okay, somehow they exist operators, single trace operators, localized in R hat, but not in R1 hat or R2 hat separate. Okay. Anyway, so 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 uh, so this is more long trivial example. And this is related to the phenomena on the gravity side. So, so if you look at the uh, uh, what's gravity side, this uh, x r one using x r two corresponding to that corresponding to just the union of the entangled wedge for r one r two separately. Okay, so so this is just a, a this shaded region. Okay, uh, 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 corresponding to the uh, union of these two. And so this is what we normally call the causal wedge. Okay, so in this case, it's also called the causal wedge and associated with the R1 using R2. Okay, 
And so this is the, um, but now the, uh, uh, now you can show that the, uh, the algebra corresponding to R1 using R2 is actually given by this spark region. Okay. Uh, uh, which is actually corresponding to the entanglement wedge of this R. And so in this case, and, the, and, the, and the this feature just corresponding to the causal wedge is a subset of the entanglement wedge. Hong, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so when you say that uh, you can show this on the boundary, is this uh, a proof in principle? Is this uh, how explicit uh, of an understanding do you have of these operators that uh, extend beyond the union of the uh, causal Yeah, edges? Yeah, we can just construct the operate explicitly in this region in right. terms of the uh, uh, algebra here. Yeah, it's okay. a it's an explicit HKLL kind of construction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That uh, presumably about the vacuum, or is the yeah. Yeah, this is the vacuum. Yeah, this is the vacuum. Yeah. This is the vacuum. yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah. So, so in this case, uh, this additivity anomaly just reflected that the causal wedge is a subsector. Uh, it, it's a subset of the entanglement wedge. Okay. Uh, actually, it's just a, a quick follow-up question because I'm trying to follow the logic properly here. Um, and you can show that, uh, of course, you can reconstruct via HKLL uh, or you know the appropriate uh, method uh, the operators that live in the in in the bulk region of interest. Uh, what I'm curious, so you, the point is that you can show that these guys directly viewed from the boundary. Uh, satisfy the criterion that would place them in your entanglement wedge definition, but yeah, fail the right. criteria that, okay, good, thanks. Yeah, uh, that's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so so here uh, involves some kind of non-trivial modular flows, which does not happen in this case, yeah. Uh, and we can write down those modular flow explicitly, yeah, uh, 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 for this special example. Right, so that's probably related to this Faulkner Lukovic sort of approach for reconstructing things on the boundary, or is it not? It, it, it's different because their construction is from the block. Uh, 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 yeah. There, he said, assuming you, you know it in the block, you can do it in the boundary. He, here, we do it in the boundary and we try to deduce things in the block. Yeah. Yeah, it's an intrinsic boundary construction. And here, in particular, uh, this is a non trivial example we can. Uh, reconstruct the RT surface. Okay, uh, we can deduce the RT surface just starting from the boundary algebra. Starting from the boundary algebra, then we ask, what is the region of the block? Okay, such that the algebra in that region is equivalent to this boundary algebra, and then and then that turns out to be this uh, 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 for this case. Uh, so that's gave you the RT surface for uh, 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 for this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so um, you you are able you are, so you are able to show these types of inclusion uh, relation um, starting from your definitions on the boundary, but um, and to match it to similar inclusions in the but but how do you know that the the thing that quantifies this the difference between these. Uh, Algebra is exactly the RT surface and not some other surface that you could draw. And because uh, how do you get quantitatively to this to the RT surface in the work? Sorry, say it again. I didn't hear the last sentence. Mm. So the, in the work, the things that materializes this difference between uh, the different algebras you've uh, defined is the RT surface, um, and I'm trying to see how how did you get from the boundary uh, to the RT surface quantitatively? Like how how do you get that it's not another surface? You know, some right, other right. It, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a uh, to explain this is a complicated procedure, uh, which is rather technical. It's in the sense that you start with a global construction. You you start a, a start a point in the park, and then you can express that operator in the park in terms of the boundary uh, uh, operator, okay? But that boundary operator, yeah, so this is called the uh, HKL global construction, which uh, covers a huge, yeah, uh, uh, essentially covers a huge region in the boundary. But now the key is to realize that kind of construction can be localized for different region in the, for operator in the different region in the park, somehow that global construction can be localized into some sub region. 
And that's what we do. Yeah, uh, and that's it's a highly non-trivial procedure which we develop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I don't, yeah. I guess it's, it's hidden in this uh, non-trivial construction. <laughs> that, that's right, that's right. Yeah, uh, it's a, uh, 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 yeah, require, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 some procedure to define, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So let me talk about the third uh, uh, implication. It, 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 it's this provide a physical explanation of this quantum error correction property. So now let's consider the situation. Uh, again, this is the boundary. And then suppose you have two region A1, A2, they, then they, they intersect on the boundary A1 uh, using H, uh, uh, intersection A2. And then what's interesting in this entanglement wedge you said that the entanglement wedge for A1 you, uh, uh, intersection with A2 is a proper subset of the uh, intersection of the EA1 and the EA2. So EA1 is this region, uh, EA1 is this region, and EA2 is this region. So, so there's this red region, which is in the intersection of the entanglement wedge, but not in the, not in the uh, entanglement wedge of the intersection. So there exists this kind of region tells you that the box description is actually highly redundant because if you say have operated here, then you can eliminate say a uh, 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 part of the, uh, 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 yeah, you can just eliminate uh, a part of the, uh, uh, your boundary still, you can reconstruct this region and you can reconstruct in a multiple way. Okay. And so this has been uh, interpreted in terms of quantum error corrections in a very beautiful way. And, uh, and, uh, and also this has provided a uh, guiding principle for building many toy models of holography, say using tensor networks, et cetera. Uh, but the physical origin of this quantum error correcting properties has never been clear. Okay, it's more like say, oh, in the box, somehow there's such kind of properties and then we can interpret them. Okay, Th they just behave like some kind of quantum error correcting properties, okay. And by giving that interpretation, you can uh, have lots of marriages. But it's never clear where does that uh, uh, property come from. So this additive anomaly, it turns out uh, 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 this is precise. Uh, 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 this just comes from this additivity anomaly. Because uh, so if you start, say suppose you will start this R1 and R2, uh, Uling and the uh, 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 which is a subset of the R1 Uling R2. And now if I take a commutant of this, and then I just get the uh, R1 prime in the sec with R2 prime, and then it's a proper subset of their uh, 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 intersection of their uh, 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 each one. Okay, and this equation of course is precisely just this equation. Uh, uh, when we identify this algebra with the corresponding uh, uh, entanglement region. So, uh, 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 so this kind of uh, quantum error correcting feature is precisely just, uh, it, it's again, just a geometric uh, a reflection of this kind of additivity anomaly uh, come from the Nagin uh, uh, limit uh, 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 of the uh, boundary theory. Okay. So, so, so uh, I'm very late. Sorry, I'm just very quickly say a few examples. Uh, uh, you can also look at other more general regions. Say if you consider such kind of time bands, say say take the all the operator algebra in the half space time or half of the space time. So so suppose this is a time direction and this is a vertical is a time direction. This is a spatial direction, and then and then suppose you are in the thermal field double state, and then uh, uh, previously we argued that the uh, the algebra here. Uh, is two or to the bark operate algebra in this kind of wedge region in the, the in the internal black hole. And you can also consider some kind of time band in the vacuum. Say it's an auto, or, uh, operate algebra uh, uh, for the CFT uh, restricted to this uh, uh, range of the time. And then and then you can show that this goes one into some kind of spherical window region uh, on the boundary. Okay. Uh, 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 let me just quickly go through here. Uh, and if the time band becomes sufficiently wide and uh, uh, deep, uh, yeah, if the time is sufficiently big, and then you find actually dual to the full bulk operating edge. And the key thing is that if you now look at the very thin time band, and then that will dual to some 
very thin wedge on the bound, uh, near the boundary. And then if you look at the commitment of this, and then that will do, okay, uh, uh, the commitment of this, there's no obvious boundary geometric description. And that actually will do to this diamond uh, in the gravity side. Okay, so by taking the commitment of this kind of uh, 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 a time band, we can actually describe the bulk region which does not touch the boundary. Okay, and uh, you can consider more uh, more examples, say, uh, uh, etc. Okay, so so let me just very quickly uh, 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 stop here. Uh, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second because I think. Uh, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> charge device or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, any questions? Yeah. Sorry, I'm uh, uh, running very late. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just maybe a, a quick. Uh, Specific question about the so the map from if I if I have a general space time region on the boundary, uh, then then I guess you would say there's some there's some al there's some specific algebra associated with that the single trace operators in this in the space time region. Yeah. Um, and then you were just talking about the examples of the bulk region um, associated with that. Yeah. Um, can, I I was just a little bit. Unsure. So, so what's the general um, what's the general way that I can understand the bulk region that corresponds to a space time region? So the the bulk region that corresponds to the algebra that corresponds to this boundary space time right. region. Right, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's of course it's a difficult question. Right now we can only do it by brute force. Uh -huh. uh, by, uh, by brute force. In the in the leading order in large limit by using that the boundary is a generalized free field theory, and uh, and then we develop some tricks to do it. Uh, uh, it's more like this localization of this global HKRL construction. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, I see. So you don't have a you don't have a specific proposal for a general space time region. What what bulk? Um... Algebra no. that would correspond to. Well, I see. Uh, uh, we can do it. Uh, we can do it in principle in the in the G Newton goes to zero limit in the in the leading order in the large n limit. Yeah, that's all I. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, doing. yeah. There's a in principle a way to do it. It just do it explicitly is hard, and uh -huh. then we can only do it for some more special regions. Yeah, and uh, and these two separate two half space separated by finite interval is the uh, the 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 most non-trivial example we can do at the moment. Okay, but you you would conjecture that, given a state and in, in some dual space time in the large n limit, that there's some specific map between boundary space time regions and bulk space time regions. That yeah. that would yeah okay yeah yeah there is a uh, there is a systematic procedure to do it. Just to uh, we have a systematic procedure to do it, and that procedure is general. But you yeah. carry out that procedure uh, requires lots of technicalities, which in practice uh, can only work for very simple regions and for uh, for the vacuum. Yeah. Uh -huh. But do you, but do you think that the the output, like the final answer, I mean, what, one might hope that 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 could be stated simply as some geometrical construction going from the boundary to, to the bulk. Uh, do you think that's true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, this conjecture regarding entanglement wedge and the causal wedge, at least they uh, 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 they give you a very specific way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there are some regular time band we can conjecture what they correspond to, and then corresponding to uh, uh, the committent corresponding to this diamond in the box, etc. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are very simple cases you can uh, you can guess uh, mm -hmm. what's the corresponding bulk region. And we also have a procedure which you can use to guess what's the corresponding bulk region, and uh, um, yeah, yeah. But but to do it in detail, very explicitly, for specific states, uh, a specific bulk region or boundary region, it's complicated. Yeah, it's technically complicated. Okay. Uh, okay. Even so, if if I just took the vacuum state and pure pure global ADS, and then and then I had a, a boundary region, even even then, is it? It's yeah, that in principle, uh, 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 that in principle, our procedure can do it. 
And uh, uh, again, there's some technical complications if you have more, more complicated regions. Yeah. And then, yeah. then say, yeah, uh, 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 but there is much better. Uh, we have a very systematic procedure. Uh, 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 I think with enough power, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question about uh, so in in the in the in the um, duality at large n you you propose that any type three one subalgebra of the boundary would map to a subregion. Uh, does does this type three one subalgebra needs to be has always some geometrization on the boundary? No, no. Now, for example, this example I talked about uh, uh, the uh, uh, the one dual to the um the one dual to this uh, 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 some kind of diamond in the box that oh, yeah. does not have a geometric interpretation in the boundary yeah yeah true. some kind of abstract algebra so so this is why maybe the relation between mapping a a, a, a one of these subalgebra to a geometry in the bulk can be complicated oh yeah yeah certainly it's non trivial yeah yeah, uh, but here we hope we provide a language, okay, uh, a, a, a framework. Uh, uh, you can use it as a, a, a starting point to build the technical tools. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, actually, I also have some uh, uh, something I need to go right now. Oh, all right. So let's take a moment. Thanks, Okay. Okay. Thank yeah, you, thank you a lot. Yeah. Nice seeing you. Okay, yeah, good to see you guys. Yeah. Mm.